ASIS Global Meeting, the 2021 edition, which is held here again online on the groundbreaking Run the World platform. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you, and I, uh, I'm really waiting to see your opinion on uh, this very, very interesting subject that we have in our panel, Yearning for the Old Times is Passé. So actually, all these uh, discussions uh, should start thinking about how in the past the life was and how the technology changed our world. And not only the technology, also the difficult times that we had to pass in the last year with this virus, which actually pushed us to be more close to uh, technology than to people. And this is why we are asking ourselves if we are desensitized and uh, if we still care for each other. My strong opinion is that uh, the human from each of us is much stronger. And uh, this is why I really believe that uh, we have the possibility in the future to become again more caring to each other like it was in the old good nostalgic times. I would like to give the word to you. And for the beginning, I think it is okay if we will uh, have a few minutes introduction where you can present yourself and uh, your basic ideas about, uh, about uh, the issue that we are talking about. Carrie, I would like to start with you. Okay. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm so honored to be here, so thank you so much. Um, yeah, my, my name is Carrie Cummings. I'm the founder of The Mind Bar, where we help high achievers who, from the outside, look very successful, um, find, to make them, help them feel successful on the inside. Um, we get that you know, last 1% out of it, um, help them figure out what's going to make them feel happy and successful as they actually are. Um, yeah, and I am a clinical psychologist, um, also an ex-management consultant and a mindfulness expert. And on this subject, I think um, we have not only in the last year and a half, but even before that have become in incredibly distracted by technology. Um, on the one hand, it has made our world very small and we're very, very connected. Um, through technology, you know, we, we know what's going on in all parts of the world. If we wanted to, we could find out. Um, we have tons of information. We can connect with anyone like we're doing right now. We're all over the world. Um, um, at the same time, though, um, there's no boundaries. And we there's no boundaries to the information. There's no boundaries to what information we choose to consume and um, that actually is an overwhelm for our brain and literally causes our executive functioning to to dysfunction um, that just put very in a very simple way can actually um, impede our capabilities for compassion it's too much to put it simply it's too much for us to uh, really wrap our, our minds around. So therefore we kind of shut down and we go, our brain goes into efficiency mode. And um, so I think that it's not because we don't care anymore. Um, I think human beings, the, one of the number one needs in as a human basic need is uh, the need for belonging. Um, we're social animals. And um, I think that what what's happening is that all this great technology, which is wonderful, is 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 kind of like a layer up over ourselves um, that is clouding our compassion because it's too much information. And I think the key is finding, getting in touch with our own values. Again, we do have them, all of us do, um, and learning how to manage our attention. So that's what like, mindfulness, mindfulness does is helps you focus on the present moment and really know or undistract yourself. You have to figure out which 
which bits of information, which thoughts in my head do I serve me and which don't serve me. And um, I think that's one of the keys is really um, learning to manage all the distraction around us and the, and the overwhelm of information. Because the values we have, the human, the common humanity, we, we have it, each and every one of us. It's, it's inside. Um, all we need to do is kind of weed out the distraction. Um, yeah, I don't know how much time I have to talk, actually. So um. oh, It's okay. So it, it's okay for now. Uh, it's very interesting, your point. Especially, I think it's very important what you told that uh, each of us has the need of belonging. And uh, some of the disruptions that appeared in the life of each person comes from the fact that sometimes by uh, these technologies, uh, we are feeling more connected to technical than to other human beings. But let's see now the opinion of uh, Pankaj. Pankaj, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. You know, not only honored, very, very excited, very happy to be part of this very, very interesting discussion. You know, when I saw this topic and I was not able to believe that something which I have been thinking about for some time, how come Horace thought of this topic? You know, and this, this subject is extremely, extremely close to my heart and grateful to meet the wonderful people. So a very, very brief introduction about myself. I consider myself as a serial entrepreneur who want to work for society. One. Second, I believe strongly that no change in the society in real manner is possible unless the initiative is scalable. So things cannot be just not for profit. They should have an impact. An impact would come if it is scalable and for scalable, the, any initiative has to be self-sustainable, self-sufficient. So my dream is to be known as social entrepreneur. Currently, I'm an entrepreneur and a social person. I'm trying to move towards the marriage of that. I'll, I have been in UAE for 23 years. I think this country has contributed a lot in my thought process because you know, unless somebody tells me this is the first time I came across where the government has formed Ministry of Happiness. So there is a proper Ministry of Happiness as a cabinet function, which dwells upon not only what we are doing in our work life, this, but as human, as society, as together, are we happy or not? I think this kind of vision, this kind of wisdom is beyond appreciation. This clearly shows that I'm lucky to be part of such a government where not only very wise and visionary leaders are there, but they have capability to think beyond social and economic life. I, I run a business called Gulf Islamic Investment. Uh, it's, I'm a founder of it and I'm in business of making businesses. So heavily involved in education, in uh, impact investment, in environment investment, in green economy, in initiatives around education for underprivileged. And uh, my introduction would be incomplete without my family. So my wife, my mother, and I have two sons. We all live in UAE. And, uh, God has been more than kind and whatever I can do beyond my family, I think it would be less. I have, I have still to do a lot. This is my goal. Okay. Thank you very much, Pankaj. It's very interesting, uh, your points of view. And uh, I think uh, uh, one of the most important uh, things that uh, you explained to us is the existence of such a ministry of happiness. Uh, it's very, very unusual, but I think in this world uh, can help a lot a community, a country, and actually all the people to, to be more self-confident in their lives and in the future of their lives. Thank you very much. Now I would like to uh, go to Rajev, and uh, please, Rajev, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, we are hardly waiting to hear also your opinion. Thank you. Uh First of all, uh, is is the audio okay? Yes, it is. 
thank you uh, i i come from india represent uh, indian chamber of commerce which is uh, one of the very old chamber here we represent industries multiple sectors and uh, i am happy to be among all of you uh, who have uh, wealth of knowledge expertise so i'll be sharing my thoughts of course i look forward to learning from you all i think uh, we uh, the the topic is very interesting and uh, the answers are not uh, very simple i think let's do a quick scanning of uh, we are talking about uh, uh, peacefulness we are talking about uh, giving caring and all that i think let's do a quick scanning at various levels the first level i would say let's look at what's happening in different uh, geographies like what's happening in uh, let's say different parts of the world and you see uh, some some countries within some countries some regions some places are uh, at a different level in terms of uh, peacefulness in terms of caring in terms of uh, the second level i would say let's look at the the societal level how the society is behaving in different parts of the world uh, how the businesses let's say the businesses in us businesses in india businesses in china how how much do do they care how much do they share how much do they contribute to these uh, uh, larger objectives uh, the third scanning we can do at uh, the political level how the political leadership worldwide they are looking at all these uh, uh issues another important segment is the religion the religious leaders what the religions are teaching how they are uh, helping people spread all these all these concepts and the values another level where we could scan is at the family level uh, how the families are uh, behaving like you have uh, nuclear families now uh, the numbers are growing so how much families uh, and within the family structures uh, uh, how much people really care and again you see a uh, different behavior like small example if you if you go from a big city to a neighboring small town or let's say a village then you see a change in all these things whether it is about peacefulness whether it is about caring whether it is about giving so uh and then the last and the most important is as as individuals all of us who basically form this society uh the entire uh, country how we behave and if we try to address uh, uh the issue at all these levels then only will we will be able to make uh, a larger impact i think overall i would say it's a matter of priority what comes first what comes first for the country for the society for the family for the people now what is what is the origin of all these issues how these issues are coming up what is driving the change i think we we uh, the the session itself talk about media push and pull information overload but i think we we should also look at uh, the basic education system whether that is addressing and developing and supporting a culture on these lines what is our uh, religion teaching us because that has far reaching uh, impact what are the societal values and these values we would see they differ from uh, region to region and uh, from uh, uh, place to place and whether the change is actual and real yes it is because uh, you see the climate change happening you see unequal growth happening you see reduced tolerance you see extremism happening and you see uh, disproportionate distribution of wealth you see the violence and you see uh, people uh, differentiate on the basis of caste creed uh, so these are some of the issues i think uh, which one has to look at and the the solution really lies in all these so i'll stop here thank you
Okay, thank you, Lajev. It's very interesting, and I really like the idea of uh, approaching uh, the happiness and uh, all these kind of things connected uh, at different levels, including the individual and the family levels. And uh, yes, uh, it is very important to see how the uh, things can be seen from different regions, from different cities, from different parts of the world. Uh, India is a very diverse country and in India too, uh, there are many, many differences from north to south or uh, from, east to, 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 from east to west. So uh, it's uh, very, very correct what you are saying. You know, uh, I'm thinking now to a very famous word, which is from China, and the, the, the saying is something like this from a poem, that the sunset is infinitely good, but it's just near dusk. And I'm thinking if uh, we, uh, all the people, are seeing all this technology and all the media, which is around us like uh, a sun, like a sunset, and uh, it's really something near the dusk. I'm thinking if we are really so much... Uh, influenced in our daily life by media and I'm thinking if we can manage so that the media not to involve the bad things in our life but actually to help us in uh, the beautiful things that are connected to, to our life. What do you think, uh, Carrie? I, yeah, I, I think that um, you know, as you were speaking just now on the, the, as the, the different levels, I really feel that I'm coming from an individual level because the, it all starts at the individual level. Um, and due to the influx of information and, and bound, like boundless um, information, you know, I see in, in different societies that the values have been come, have become very um, vague. And, um, you know, the, the family values, I just see in the U.S., for example, um, there's a lot, or not just in the U.S., but there's a lot of polarization going on, and also um, a lot of um, di a huge amount of different values. And I think that it's absolutely important in the, our educational system to update the educational system for young people to learn how to think critically and to um really understand the global connections that are out there um you know our our world is no longer small it's, it's expansive um we're connected to everything and i do think that it starts on the individual level to learn how to critically um analyze and evaluate what you're confronted with out there because we're losing our core, we're losing our foundation, I think. And then you become victim to information if you don't know what your core is. Now this hmm. is, so I'm, I come from a very individual level, but I think it's obviously um, lots of factors involved. Yeah. Are we, Pankaj, do you think that we are victims of, of so many information that we have around us? Certainly, you know, I, I think uh, Kerry has started on a very apt point of individual. See, if you look at it, you know, the way my thought process is. So I would just extend your thought process, Kerry. I hope I, I'm not taking too much of liberty. That individual and just take it to family. See, family is the smallest unit of society. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Rajiv and uh, Kerry made both interesting points about the sense of belongingness and uh, Rajiv mentioned about when we move away from the city to village the paradigm there's a shift in the paradigm and if I were to interpret both part and add my version of it I think they are exactly the same thing and if you scratch the surface when we talk of the society or family as the smallest unit of the society and I think Kerry would agree with me because she is in a professional life as a counselor, that everything goes around one fact that how much time we are giving to each other. See, we, when situation goes bad, we will spend time with counselor. Counselor will tell, communicate, spend time with your kids, spend time with each other. When doctor or somebody prescribe us externally, we will do that. But if you look at, and I, you know, because I have two growing up kids and I keep on talking and I'm 
mentoring few kids i hope i am doing the right job that a very important point in our life is a word called balance mm -hmm. every in balance would keep situation far more control then once we miss it we get to the extremes and we lose the track of the situation for example technology see i don't think there is anything bad in the technology it is helping immensely but where the problem is happening that as a parent rather than spending time with my children i am spending more time on instagram facebook and so on nothing wrong with it but i should balance it because today what is happening that i am not telling my kids what happens in village and i rajiv would uh, i think would uh, agree with me that people spend time with each other less of internet more to, more of interaction right so from that perspective if right from the beginning when the children you decide when you give them mobile phone when you give them ipad when you give them this internet is spend time with them and you know children are the best student they learn from their parents if parents are not spending right quality of time and they are themselves not following because we teach this uh, children are absorbing uh, absorbing their parents they see oh he or she is doing this way i can also do this way if i tend to spend 3 hours in front of tv i cannot expect my child or any younger one not to follow that so balance in life is an extremely important aspect if the younger ones are taught that do everything but in balance i think we would be able to take care of the situation to some extent that is one important point i strongly believe and second which i said is we have to give time see what is happening in this pursuit of competition we are not giving time to either spouse to friends or to our own health or to our kids or to our society or even to our own value system when you would not spend time how would you expect things would work in the right manner i remember i think i read that book like most of the book i read two three pages and i don't get enough sort of a consistency this uh, men are from mars and women are from venus you know i read that i then i was a student i read that book and it says one thing very important which is still stuck in my head that relationships you have to work on them you cannot expect relationships to grow in vacuum which means you have to give time so i think this perspective which rajiv and carry have elaborated in my if i were to take the liberty to respond to them or to add i think if we take family as the smallest unit of the society if we inculcate balance and value of time to our kids and then they follow it and if everything in every family follows that i think society would be able to get to a much balanced approach and that peace happiness health would be the byproduct of it. i think that's how i think okay it's it's very interesting uh, i would just like before uh, entering in a free discussion to to ask rajev if uh, the balance in our life can uh, uh, provide us a kind of safety of not being victims of the media links which uh, push and pull our thoughts non-stop in our uh, era absolutely uh, but i think uh, the basic question uh, which will come up now from where are we drawing uh, this uh, intelligence to strike that balance who is giving us those values who is telling the human beings i mean uh, all of us who has really taught us that how do you how do you balance in life and from where are we drawing those values i think that question is very important because unless you have the capability and the intellect to understand what is balance and how do you how do you practice the balance it will remain a concept and you will not be able to use it 
Mm. That is one. Secondly, you asked about media. I think it is very uh, striking to see that media is uh, basically playing certain themes. And uh, if you look at uh, the themes which are playing now is basically health, religion, politics, crime, crime and entertainment. And these are the things, these are the agendas which are being driven by different stakeholders or if you want, you can call them interest groups. Like COVID time, you find a lot of uh, news coming up on health. But this is only happening when there is a there is a crisis. But politics, religion, uh, these are themes, crime. These are themes which are being uh, driven and uh, people are being fed. And again, I come back to the same thing. The information overload may be there. We are being fed by media. and uh, But the point is you need to have that intellect, that intelligence to screen to pick up the right thing, to be able to interpret whether it is right, wrong. And then you have the challenges of fake media, fake news coming up and all these online channels which keep playing. And uh, right from India to US and different parts, you have uh, all these. Uh, uh, but but again, I think uh, uh, we need to address uh, the core issues of giving people, helping people, acquiring that intelligence to be able to balance and to be able to understand and differentiate. Thank you. Yes, it's very interesting. And I will uh, give the word to Kerry in one second. Um, you said something very important that people should have the intellect to, to interpret, to understand all the abundance of information that we have through the media channels, all kinds of media channels. And uh, this is uh, connected to something that I uh, really believe in and I strongly believe that the education is one of the issues that we have to push very much in all the countries so that people in this new world, let's call so, mm -hmm. to understand uh, which is the difference between a positive information and the negative information, between a, a positive news and the negative news. Uh, it's very, very important, uh, your point. And I'm remembering now, and uh, I, I told that uh, one of the rehearsal meetings that we had something to you that uh, one of the lessons that I had from uh, the Arab countries when I visited the Arab countries was that uh, my friends from there taught me that uh, the, the actual life, it's like the uh, uh, dunes in the desert because we can sleep in the evening with the dunes in one position and in the morning all the landscape can be changed but uh, we are still there in the same position. So this is how the waves of this new life is going uh, on and are coming through us uh, something like the dunes of the desert that can be changed quickly suddenly but we must cope with them we must face them and we have to have the courage the optimism to going further uh carry i i promise that i will give you the word because you wanted to, to say to us something thank you um i i totally agree on what every what everybody has said so far and i do keep coming back to the same thing and that is um as you both said it starts with family and relationships but it goes a little bit one step beyond into the individual um because we have to um i, I see a lot of my clients um <clears throat> i notice that most people have lost touch with their their kind of inner voice um their own needs and they and why is is partly because of just core beliefs that that we all carry around with us um but also because we are distracted and disoriented and um i think that there's different factors of how to deal with that one is i absolutely agree with you um that we need to work on the educational system mm -hmm. i see my, my children have three kids um my 16 year old just told me this morning that there's a um, election in, in one part of Germany that just happened. And she said now that this section of Germany looks like the like it did in the Weimar Republic and which is right before um, you know, the Nazis came to power. And she's like, this is really disturbing. She was very upset. 
I'm proud of my daughter because she thinks very critically and informs herself, but most people don't. And in fact, most adults don't. Um, you know, we, as you said, the dunes shifting, um, we are kind of victims of all kinds of, not just fake news, but different perspectives too. Like this might not be fake news, but it's a different view on something that might be all of them correct. And we're, not, we're missing the global, the global connections between those bits of information. Um, having said that, that's the educational system side of it. Um, I think that, um, you know, go, going to the individual level, we do need to um, start training ourselves to listen to when we feel distressed. Um, I think we ignore our, our, the signals in our bodies. Um, not even we don't even ignore them necessarily. We just don't even notice them anymore. We just are so used to not just kind of pushing through with stress um, that we don't even learn. We've we've forgotten how to interpret our own inner voice and what our body is telling us. And um, for example, when you were saying we need to get off of our phones and or not be on the TV, is watching TV as a role model for our children. Um, I think many people just numb themselves and they don't, they're, if they really tuned in to their own signals, they would notice, okay, this is enough. I'm going to put my phone down. This isn't serving me anymore. Um, but we have learned to ignore that. And um, so I know this is on like very micro level, very, very, very individual micro level, but it really, I truly believe it starts there in order for each of us to take responsibility for ourselves in order to take responsibility for others or, or share in the responsibility. Okay, thank you. Yes, you, you can yeah. just, uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, I think Rajiv, a very, very important point which you raised that how to practice balance. And if I were to relate Carrie's point, last point, which you say that how we have become numb to ourselves, I think there could be a common answer, which is, stress on value-based education. So Cyprian, I'm not sure of, you know, how much you guys have come across, but like we read about STEAM or STEM education, right? Mm -hmm. There is a aspect of the education which is called value-based education. So in addition to what you are being taught to become employed, employable, or bring some economic value to your family, now schools or certain organizations, I would not talk in general, but the certain schools which I am associated with, we are focusing on also a day, which is Saturday on value-based education. So we are running this, in, especially in slum schools, no bag day, and we are teaching not only kids, the parents also what is the importance of value-based education and how Edu values can be imparted through education. So there are multiple organizations which are doing it in one form or the other. So just to tell you, you know, it, you may take it as an extension of moral science, these kind of subjects which were taught, but now there is an increased focus on it. And by doing that, you are getting, you know, addressing which very important question that how should I learn how to balance? Who taught me? And of course, there are various extrapolation, religion, and all those things. I don't want to get into that because I'm not a competent authority on it. But like, you know, very valid point that if we ourselves don't listen to our own in, as an individual, you know, that yes, I'm not supposed to do what's right or wrong, or I don't have a sense of right or wrong. I would not be able to impart this. And now, second part, I would bring that media thing. See, media is a reflection of society and vice versa. Both are influenced by each other. So what is shown in media is also reflects the state of the society and what society does by getting inspiring from media is also a reality. So we have to be very clear about this. At least I am strong believe or I strongly believe in that, that media and society are interlinked. I would ask a simple question. Pran, I, I'm not very much into Europe movies, but how many movies you see Today are on happy theme. 
you know bearing some kids cartoon movies you know how many love stories are coming most of the movies today are either around war or saving us president or a terrorist attack or a conspiracy story or an action movie or some kind of a space war See, what is what it shows it shows that the people who are producing content they are getting the clue that produce these things because society is looking into this and i have attended a very interesting seminar with bollywood guys and they have a very typical answer we produce what people want to see if i talk of india today you would find lot of violence lot of comedy comedian this comic and lot of sex full stop gone are the days of love stories so what it shows is society getting on the extreme i'll give you another example by the way i am a big fan of euro news okay and i watch euro news and i love that part, the last no comment i love that part you know before no comment. okay okay so before before uh, letting rajev to to say his uh, uh, opinion in uh, our uh, discussion continuing our ideas i would like just to say you something that we have here a saying uh, that uh, the real life stories are beating the movie scenarios and uh, this is why i'm telling you that if we do not have enough love in the movies then let's make in the real life to have more love more caring to each other and more that kind of normal environment that uh, we are uh, looking sometime with nostalgia about like it was in the past uh, rajev i'm listening to you sure thank you so i think we have uh, already spoken about uh, the issues which are there and also the factors which are driving uh, the issues and what is lacking let me spend uh, a minute or so in saying what what really needs to be done and how do we how do we address this so my first response to this is that the religion has probably all the answers any religion in the world if you talk if you look at it talks about compassion it talks about caring it talks about giving it talks about peace so the religion has the answers unless there are uh, uh, people with some some agenda or uh, some vested interests which i will not talk about another factor is i think if you want to uh, like uh, pankaj mentioned that uh, anything good has to be scalable so i think we need to we need to create the awareness we need to showcase the good work we need to celebrate the good work being done by people show them as the role models to the world and that will bring the culture that will spread the culture and that will encourage more people to follow to practice and to do things uh i think we have repeated this point but change definitely has to start at the individual level if all of us change if everyone changes the world changes i think uh, it is also important and uh, it is also uh, uh i would say the success would depend on bringing the leadership also on board because leaders play a very important role uh in terms of uh, working on the people i would say it's very easy to work on the children and the youngsters because through the education we can give them the right kind of values tell them how to how to balance tell them how to screen uh, the info which is flowing into them how do they how how do they make the right kind of choices but i think it's also important to uh, bring the the leadership whether that is the corporate leadership whether that is the political religious or the societal leadership we also need to bring them on board because uh, that will drive uh, the right kind of attitude and behavior among the grown ups at the end i would say that there is a country which uh, not which does not talk 
they talk about gnh and that is gross national happiness so they as a country that is bhutan so bhutan measures the gross national happiness and they have an index and they are not too much bothered about gdp thank you okay thank you very much i would like to say before um, going to the conclusions that uh, our colleague diana uh, she uh, was here with us but couldn't join directly because of some technical issues but uh, it's very important what she said uh, about the basic ideas that she wanted to discuss about uh, self reflecting cultivating the spirits self development return to music return to nature and uh, because she's our colleague even she couldn't join live now the session i would like to uh, thank also to diana because he had the chance to meet in in the previous uh, meetings that we had and um uh, also thank to frank jorgen richter for organizing this fantastic uh, panel i would like one minute uh, from uh, each side because we will uh, have uh, in 3 minutes our time ended uh, and uh, i would like to start with kerry Thank you. Um yeah, I just concluding I I think it's a good point to to note the societal um leadership as you just uh, mentioned. I think um that the the media is the societal leadership and I think it is really important that we that that has more that more positive news has focused because actually a lot of wonderful things are happening in this world that we don't tend to hear about. We usually tend to hear about all the bad news. and um i think it's a huge responsibility that the media has to um be kind of a carrier of of a uh, positive society global society in uh, not only also reporting on good news but also um but putting out the right role models in the entertainment industry um showing leaders of minority um you know showing um different countries collaborating and actually getting along um and i think that there's not enough of that and i think that the media plays a huge role in that thank you pankaj your conclusion yeah, very quickly i think in adding to what kerry said we should also in like channel of tourism and travel and food we should should have channels of positivity one number two a very important i'm going back to 60s india promoted something called principle of coexistence panchi five principle coexistence we should believe in coexistence not just in competition you know that because competition is leads to death cooperation leads to life third we have to focus on tolerance and compassion this will bring middle way we both have to share life we all have to share life and last point value based education value based education value based education thank you very much now please raise your conclusion absolutely so my point of view is that uh, let us let the change begin at our own end first let us all agree that uh, we will change we will uh, inculcate all these values in our daily life second thing what we can do is people people around us with whom we work with whom we deal who we meet interact with let us also spread and share these values all of us have uh, also in our uh, work life we interact with people we also have uh, to some extent some influence on uh, uh, maybe some people some people around us so let us also try to use the influence and uh, try to uh, make an effort so that things can scale up so i would say that these are the three things which we can do and uh, then of course uh, there are uh, free media channels which we all can use to spread the good word and to spread the good news thank you okay thank you very much i would like to thank you all for attending this fantastic panel and uh, uh, the most important thing is that we have very very good takeaways out from our discussion uh, thank you again to everybody and thank you to our chairman dr richter and also to the other attendees who are listening to us thank you have a thank nice you. day thank you thank you so much thank you pankaj great that. to see you thank bye you bye. Bye. thank you bye thank bye. you sipran thank you chair Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.